is an extremely uh, crucial mission for India. You know, give us a sense of how important and why is it that the South Pole of the Moon is this important? So the mission is important for two reasons. Uh, one, of course, is a scientific reason. We haven't explored this region of the moon before, so it will give us a better idea of what kind of minerals that are deposited there and whether or not we can find water there and a potential place for a human uh, colony in the future. And from a technology perspective for the Indian Space Program to be able to demonstrate this um, all the way from launching to going into lunar orbit to landing with a soft landing on the surface uh, is incredibly important for future human missions to the moon. Absolutely. We'll, we'll discuss uh, more on that. Uh, do continue to stay on with this. Meanwhile, Georgina Kramer is also with us. Uh, and, and Ms. Kramer, you know, the fact is one of the key objectives of this, of this mission is, is to try find out more about how much water there is on the surface of the moon. Now, this is, of course, at the South Pole. The last time around, Chandrayaan-1 had managed to get what was described as indirect evidence about the existence of water on the northern pole of the moon. Now, how, how significant is the discovery of water? I mean, will we actually end up getting water during this mission? Is that a part of what is being looked at here? What's really important about this is that um, Chandrayaan-2 will be able to tell how accessible water on the surface is going to be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if it's detected in abundance, that's great. That's wonderful. If it's not even directly detected, it doesn't mean that it's not there. Um, right. it's, it's, what's really important is for us to know how close is it so that we can access that water. Uh, that, that, that's an interesting way of putting it, how close is that water. But, uh, you know, water, liquid water cannot exist on the surface of the moon. Oh, firstly, water vapor gets, you know, uh, quickly evaporated. And... Uh, why is it such a challenge finding water on the moon, Ms. Kramer? Um, because it's so difficult for it to stay there. So if there's going to be any water there, it's probably going to be locked up in ice. It might be underneath the soil mm -hmm. um, to some extent. So again, that's, that's going to that problem of how difficult is it for us to actually access it. Absolutely, indeed. And also, Dr. Sengupta, you know, if indeed you know, there is said to be you know, adequate enough amount of water uh, how easy will it make for further space missions to actually set up, let's, let's say, you know, in the next 15, 20 years, a colony on the moon? Is that something that is foreseen here? So certainly that is a incredible embarkation for human space programs around the world to set up a future colony on the lunar surface. And that will require the development of a lot of infrastructure, both in space infrastructure between Earth and the moon and infrastructure on the ground of the moon. But finding a location where there is water prevalent would obviously support any kind of lunar base that you would have in the area. But certainly the space-based infrastructure and the lunar surface infrastructure is the big challenge. Absolutely. You know, that, that makes me uh, come to my next question. Uh, you know, we managed to land on the moon. The Americans did. NASA, of course, uh, put the first man on the moon back in the year 1969. The last time a man stepped on the surface of the moon was in the year 1972. And since then, no human being has been sent to the surface of the moon. Is there a reason as to why this has happened, as to why there is such a long period, uh, as to why no further humans have been sent onto the moon? And this issue has become interesting only recently yet again. So I think it's largely related to political will, societal will, and the amount of money which is available in the space program budget, at least in the United States. So I think what I hope to see coming down the pipeline in the next 10 to 30 years is a public private partnership model where you have space programs who are investing in it from a technology perspective, from a launch vehicle perspective, as well as the private sector investing in it from a business case perspective. But largely the reason why you saw a termination of the effort was due to a change in political will and the funding that was available in the U.S. space program. Absolutely, indeed. That, that is something that will be looked at. Now, do continue to stay on with this. Let's also take a look.